Pirates here in Wheatland, and they will start us off here for this 25-lap feature as Chris Jackson gets a jump as he sees the green flag first. J.C. Morton immediately drives to the top of the racetrack, and Morton gets a good run off of turn two, but can he hold it through three and four? Jackson bottom feeding around the short part of the track, keeps his car to the bottom, drifts up here in the middle, and leads him around for lap number one. He and Morton hooked up on either side as they work their way off of turn number two. Dylan McCowan, a youngster from Urbana, trying to hold on to third, but Ryan Gilmore with eyes on the prize, trying to take that spot away. Andy Bryant and Taylor Moore racing right behind them. Boy, again, the 18 of J.C. Morton using that top side. He has found some traction up there, and whenever he comes off of two and he comes off of four, it's just like a slingshot. He is whipped out of those turns, and he has been able to get around Chris Jackson. This is the one exception that Chris Jackson is able to have a fender out in front of J.C. Morton. Jackson, Morton, Gilmore, one, two, three, McCowan, Bryant, Ewing, four, five, six. As they work their way through lap number three of 25. Back to the flag state again. Chris Jackson getting a little breathing room this time. A half a second advantage over J.C. Morton. Morton to the top of the track again. Doesn't get as good a run off a of turn two that time. And Jackson will have clean sailing as he comes off of turn number four. Gilmore has taken that third spot solely away from McCowan, who tried to avoid contact back a couple of turns ago. Andy Bryant trying to make his way up toward the start of the field. The 32 of Robbie Ewing coming off a win last night gets close to the 28 and backs off. Six laps now in the books for the 65. Lebanon, Missouri's Chris Jackson. Looking for win number six on the season here at the Lucas Oil Speedway. That time Morton drifted way close to the wall over there by the white tires. See how much of advantage that's given Jackson this time around on the scoring circuit. And now Jackson up to almost a second and a half advantage over J.C. Morton. Ryan Gilmore solidly in third as Dylan McCowan and Robbie Ewing try to navigate the bottom of the racetrack. Well, J.C. Morton was right with him for three laps. And and then his car started to go away up on that top side. He wasn't getting the run quite like he was on the opening laps, and Chris Jackson able to pull away. But how about the eight of Dylan McCowan? What a run he has had as he started in fourth. He's been able to right now. The 77, Toby Chad is off the pace. He will pull his car back. Start with 21. Quickly, we're down to 18 cars here. But not one but two lap cars behind him as he gets around Jim Sehe and the 929 of Garrett Thompson out of Joplin, Missouri. Jackson now running into lap traffic. The next car to go a lap down to him, the 796 of Tyler Wood. Wood with quite a bit of room right now, but Jackson hard charging here. Ryan Gilmore, Shane, has continued to move up in the field. He has eclipsed J.C. Morton now and taken over the number two spot. Great job of being able to use that high side that J.C. Morton was using. Now Morton has gone down about two lines lower. He was running around the bottom over in three and four, but again, lap traffic makes everything change, and right now it's the 66 of Ryan Gilmore that's having an easier time getting through the cars that are a lap back than J.C. Morton is. We saw Caden Cornell in his late model win get over a three-second advantage on the field. Chris Jackson's lead now is 3.6 seconds. Back to Springfield's Ryan Gilmore. Gilmore in a battle with J.C. Morton, who's trying to take that number two spot back. Morton and Gilmore running a similar line as they will try to work around the 796 of Tyler Wood. Chris Jackson now coming up behind Bryce Gotchel. Gotchel in danger of going a lap down as we have eclipsed the halfway point. Jackson just continues to cruise. Chris Jackson not only the point leader, 
The Ozark Golf Cars USRA B-Mod division. He is your Outpace USRA B-Mod national point leader. 15 wins, 21 top 10s for the man from Lebanon, Missouri. And he is very close to adding another one of those to his resume as he continues to just dominate here. Now coming up on the backside of two of our younger drivers, Dayton Persley and Austin Willard. Now in her turn number three with Jackson barreling down behind them. Corey, I want to give a shout out to Dylan McCowan. We've got only nine laps left in this, and right now he is running top five on the season so far. Dylan McCowan has yet to get a top five finish. His best finish of the season has been sixth, and he is securely in fourth right now as Andy Bryant and Robbie Ewing about a second behind the number eight machine, and those two cars are duking it out for fifth. So Dylan McCowan, if he can continue to turn off laps the way he has so far and stay out of trouble, he could be looking at his season best finish. The high school student from Skyline who does have his first B-Mod win of the season over at Lebanon looking for his first top five finish on the season here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks and now he has run a bad line and right behind a lap car just about to give up a spot as Bryant gives him a little brush from behind. And that was the whole part of staying out of trouble. He saw the lap car in front of him and didn't make the adjustment early enough. Drivers will tell you whenever you start to get into lap traffic you can't wait until the turn that you're on and try to figure out where you go. You have to start looking at those cars and the line that they're running a lap or two ahead to try to figure out the best time and the best way to make a pass and Dylan McCowan and almost cost him on that one as Andy Bryant just about got around him. Bryant, another former national B-Mod champion, trying to pick up that fourth spot and take it away from the aid of young Dylan McCowan. Still a hot battle for second place between Gilmore and J.C. Morton, as Morton has yet to unravel the puzzle of how to get around the 66. Now with just three laps to go here in our long feature of the night, Chris Jackson continuing to cruise and crush the competition as he rolls it through three and four. And he comes back around, fires down the front stretch here, and knows he's just got a couple laps to go to another trip to victory lane. But a ton of cars in front of him that he has to kind of, well, like you said, you got to know where you're going to go before you enter the turn with him. And now he's got two going side by side in front of him. Jackson to the bottom of the racetrack, fires off of four and sees the white flag, but there is a car pointed the wrong way. Jackson has to woe up. Sixth position is dropped back to seventh as Chris Jackson drops the hammer. A clean restart for the 65. He's got to go two times around for another win in Wheatland. McCowan drifts back now. Andy Bryant trying to take the four spot away from him as they'll go side by side through turns three and four. Jackson jumps out in front of everybody and the white flag flies. Gilmore and Morton give chase trying to find a line that'll get them up close to the 65. Chris Jackson has won five times prior to tonight, 15 on the season. He will get win number 16 here tonight. Chris Jackson kills it again. You're going to see an outstanding race here this evening as the two heats previous had a three car battle for the lead in both of them and right now three cars are out in front battling for that top spot. It's owned by Cody Friesen right now. Toby Ott will get around the 10 of Mark Carter as they go single file in at two, three and four with Johnny Coates back in fourth behind them. These cars are typically going to find themselves two and three wide all the way through the field. The first one to be three deep is back with Bob Barnett. And you got the 7X back there as well of John Scott, who gets a little squirrely. And then the number two will get a little more squirrely as Colton Borland out of Appleton City, who ran the Diamond Nationals last week. Backstretch of Bradley Gideon, Gideon out of Ozark, unable to come up to speed. And while everybody else comes up to speed, they won't stay there long as Bradley Gideon has to take it to the infield. Actually, they leave the green out. Bradley got out of the way. And then as all of that is going on, the seven of Scott Johnson will slide to the grass. 
Great job by the Hobby Type Motorsports safety crew to get out of the way. And now, been there, just haven't been able to rattle off any better than a third place finish. He currently sits back in fifth with Cody Frazen out in front. Green flag comes out, pushes down on the go button, and he will lead the field into turn one and two. And then another spin over in turn two. That is Steve Scott. That gets twisted around. His car will come to a stop over in turn two. And that will bring the caution flag. Al Slater and Tony Anglin came out and used the event last week as a tune-up. And if those are going to be two of the guys you expect to see, along with a number of others, it is going to be an outstanding show there for the big buck. We're back to green flag racing action with Cody Friesen out in front. And Toby Ott knocking on the door. Looks to the inside over in three and four. Friesen tries to pinch him down to the inside, but Toby Ott will have none of it. He stays right in that line and will try it again in turns one and two. They're side by side for the top spot. Johnny Coates drifts high on the track, gives up a lot of ground as James Flood makes his way around Mark Carter. Bob Barnett will look to do the same, but he'll try to do it on the inside. Jam packed and jelly tight, three wide off of turn four. Carter has to lift off the gas as Flood will cruise around him on the outside. Then Bob Barnett just goes a little too heavy into turn one, lost it all on his own. So the green flag out yet again, and Toby Ott riding the low side this time. Has a two-car length advantage over Frazen. James Flood now starts to pick his way through the field. He's now up to fourth with the attrition that has gone on in front of him. Single file first through sixth. Now Bob Barnett to the inside of the 7M. That's your first side-by-side -side battle, but it is well deep in the field as that is back for seventh, a fight for seventh, which now goes to Bob Barnett. So Toby Ott out in front, a three-time winner. Your current point leader by 77 points in the Hobby Time Motorsports TNT Quick Shot Machine with a three-second or three-car length advantage over Cody Frazen that equates into about a half a second lead. Cody Frazen's been able to stay right with him though. After Toby Ott got around him, Frazen is trying to find a different line just to pick up a little more speed and draw that 27 in just a little closer lap by lap. It doesn't work for him as he loses another two tenths of a second that time around. So the lead now half a second for Toby Ott over Cody Friesen. And, and there is a nose clip laying in the top of turn number two now.
the last time it ran two years ago. <laughs> Two-year-old dirt. Well, nobody will waste any time here on lap number one as the 292 of Kyle Thompson jumps out in front. Chase Jones gets shuffled into a three-wide battle for second. They're three-wide. Going to come close to being four-wide behind them as they enter turn number three. Jones goes to the high side coming off of turn number four. But Ryan Middaw will have the second spot as everybody chases Kyle Thompson in the 292. Your midseason points champ. Peyton Phillips now falling back into fourth spot as Jones and Middall run side by side as they chase Thompson around the racetrack. Jones gets a good run off four, pulls up alongside the 21 of Butt and Buck Ryan Middall, but it looks like we're barely going to get two laps in before the caution comes out. And we'll see the orange cone inside the white tire. He will put his foot down and we will go back to green flag racing here. Mud goes up into the grass, or the grassy knoll as Shane called it earlier. And Ryan Middaw immediately trying to go to the front here. Jones to the top of the track. Middaw gets his nose underneath the 292. They drag race down the front, but Thompson still holds on to the top spot. Thompson with Middaw securely behind him now starts to get some breathing room and it's side by side racing for second place. Jones at the top, Middaw at the bottom and Peyton Phillips trying to chase them all down. Then another gaggle of six cars jockeying for position behind them that include Lucas Dobbs. Hollywood Heidenreich unable to keep momentum up over in turn four. His car comes to a standstill. Seventh place, starting alongside Colson Kirk, who has been able to keep that 5C on the racetrack and near the front each and every time out so far tonight. Chase Domer throws his car to the outside, tries to get a run on Daniel Franklin as we return to green flag racing. Middaw, Thompson, and Jones try to make it three across on the exit of turn number four. But neither Middaw nor Jones can collect the 292, but they're getting a lot closer. Three wide off of turn two, and here comes Middaw. Middaw to the bottom of the track, slides up across the front of the 292, and Ryan Middaw will be your new race leader, and Chase Jones is going to try and follow him around and get past the driver from Joplin, Missouri as well. All the while, the 98 of Peyton Phillips, who was kind of laying back in the weeds watching this unfold, is now ready to jump <laughs> into a run for a top three spot. You say lay back in the weeds, but on that restart, he was three wide off of turn two. So he decided after he was up in the mix to kind of lift off and let things pan out out in front of him. And now he may have lifted off a little too much as he has lost a lot of ground to Ryan Middaw. Colson Kirk dive bombs in below the 98, trying to pick up ground, trying to get his car up into a top four spot. Jones continues to spray dirt and mud all over the racetrack, and that body's by Bill 03 as he works over the 292 of Thompson, who had led for the first five laps of this one, but now it's Button Buck, Ryan Middaw rolling that 21 to the top of the scoring column right now, and he is on the bottom of the racetrack and trying to add to his one second advantage over Thompson. Field starting to spread out behind your race leader, Middaw. Shane told you just a minute ago, Middaw's best finish here this season has been fourth, and right now we're getting to find out what he looks like when he's in the lead. 1.2 seconds now out in front of Thompson as we get ready to cross the midway point of this 20 lap feature, Middaw slows a little bit in turn four, but hammers it down again down the front stretch. Well, Robbie Reed, your current point leader, started all the way back in 15th, and he has only been able to work up four spots. He is now in 11th, just trying to find a way to get into the top 10. Daniel Franklin will be the next one to pass, and indeed he will be able to do that. So now Robbie Reed into the top 10. Lucas Gibbs, the next on the hit list for Robbie Reed. He will dispose of him just sliding right up in front of Lucas Gibbs. And I don't think Lucas cared for that too much as he rode 
the tail end of the number five all the way down the front stretch. Look at Reed trying to ride rough shot on the field now as he tries to get around the 23 of Dobbs. Dobbs has looked good in his heat race earlier, but that Vanderbilt race car, Shane, is hooked up again. There's a reason why Reed has already been in victory lane. There's a reason why he's been your point leader as he dispatches with Dobbs, and now it'll be Colson Kirk and Jason Pursley as the man from Mexico tries to slice and dice his way through the field. All the while, everybody's just chasing Ryan Middaw. Middaw again, a 1.6 second advantage over Thompson, who led the opening five laps of this race. And Chase Domer, a big mover in this one as well. He started 12th, he's up to fifth. Domer underneath Payton Phillips, slides up into the middle of the racetrack, takes the spot away from the 98, and he can turn his attention to the 0-3 of Chase Jones. Jones, the 0-3, trying to hold on to third place, but he has got a hard-charging Chase Domer, and Peyton Phillips now, Shane, driving the exact same line after Domer passed him. Phillips thinks that's the line that might work for him. He's going to try it anyway, and it doesn't seem to be getting the same results that it does for the 227 as Chase Domer now right on the back of Chase Jones may be able to put him a lap down. Robbie Reed started in 15th. He's now found his way into the top 10. The driver of the five gets around Colson Kirk, the driver of the other five, and now he's in seventh. Kyle Thompson has cut a tenth of a second off of Middaw's lead, but it's not much when you consider Middaw's 1.5 seconds out in front of the next closest car with just three laps to go. Middaw now trying to get around the lap car of Dustin Atkinson. Atkinson already one lap down. Middaw pushed past him and put him two laps down. Now there's a car in between your race leader and the driver in second place. Atkinson does a good job to go to the top of the track and leave the lane open for your leaders. White flag lap now for Ryan Middaw as he tries to race his way into victory lane for the first time here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. Just two more turns for the driver of the 21 who got around the 292 of Joplin, Missouri's Kyle Thompson and never looked back. Ryan Middaw underneath the checkered flag and he gets the win.